The following is an installation demonstration for Impro's 995 series fire rated foam as well as the 1175 series foam seals. Items in your shipment will include a six and a half foot or two meter length of foam, epoxies parts A and B, SIL 300 seam sealant, and color match silicone sealant. Please note for the 1175, it will come in a five foot or 1.5 meter length with flexible sealant instead of the SIL 300. It is also key to ensure you are mounting the joint to the correct depth. Verify the throat of the joint is clear to match the foam depth. Please keep in mind, if installing a cover plate over the foam, you may need to recess the foam even further. Reference project details to verify requirements. Measure joint widths every six to seven feet, two meters, on center to ensure the made to order foam is correct for the joint width and depth. It is suggested to cut product to length prior to removal of packaging. Use a compound miter saw for straight cuts. Before starting the installation process, it's crucial to inspect the joint. You should inspect the full length and the width of the joint. In particular, pay attention to the joint face and throat to ensure that it is flush and plumb and there are no foam marks, voids, or honeycombing within the concrete. These images that you see here are not in acceptable condition and require remediation prior to installation. Work with your GC to ensure corrections. Poorly prepared joint conditions result in 90% of all product failures. Once joint conditions are approved, apply a covering such as duct tape and craft paper to the surrounding deck and joint face before moving forward. Epoxy is most effective between temperatures of 45 to 90 degrees or 7 to 32 degrees Celsius. Prior to mixing, make sure you are giving yourself the most amount of workability time. If it is hot out, place the epoxy in a cooler or in an air-conditioned truck to keep it from curing too quickly. If it's cold out, keep the epoxy components in a heated truck and attempt to tarp off and heat your immediate workspace. Transfer Part B into Part A container for a 1 to 1 ratio. Mix for 3 minutes with a low speed drill. The chemical reaction between the two parts will cause the epoxy to heat and set quickly. The faster you get it out of the pail, the better. Using a trowel or a chip brush, apply the epoxy to both sides of the joint to the full depth of the foam. Prior to installation, cut the foam stick out of the sideboards to prevent the knife from touching the foam. It is important to only cut open one stick at a time immediately before install as it can expand rapidly in certain conditions. Place marks on the floor that are one inch or 25 millimeters shorter than the length of the foam. Install the stick one end first and slowly knead into place. Ensure that you leave the end of the foam facing upwards in preparation for the next foam piece. Mark the floor and start installing the next stick from the opposite end, working your way back to the previously installed stick. This ensures the critical positive pressure over one inch or 25 millimeters exists at each seam. Apply the supplied flex sealant to the foam's butt end evenly, roughly 1 16th or two millimeters thick. Create positive pressure at the seams by compressing installed runs at an overlap of roughly one half inch. As mentioned previously, this is a key step to a quality installation. Use a pre-cut wood template to assist in setting the depth consistently. It is important to recess the face of the product by a quarter inch or six millimeters to leave a good surface to apply the finished bead of silicone later in the process. For vertical wall installations into gypsum or plasterboard applications, ensure details for the requirements of how to properly terminate a UL rated partition are referenced. Gypsum and or cement board must return into the throat, adhering directly to steel studs is not an approved install. Note this detail depicts a wall condition. For vertical installations, it is best to start from the bottom and work up so the foam supports the next run. For miter cuts, heat a large knife with a propane torch to easily cut through the foam. If you have changes in direction in your run or require miters to negotiate changes in direction, lightly mark your intended cut location and cut inside and outside corners per the following depictions.
Lastly, install a bead of the color match silicone caulk around the entire foam perimeter, sealing against the adjacent surfaces, and apply the color match silicone at the butt seams. It is very important to carefully follow the profile of the ribs to allow for the extreme movement that the foam is intended to address. Note, a solid bead line will result in pinched movement at the seams as seen in this image. This is how the seam should appear once complete. Allow 72 hours for the foam to completely stabilize. For more information, visit impro.com.